You really do not want a Back to Eden garden. I'm going to explain myself in just a moment. All right, so let's discuss why I think you probably don't want a Back to Eden garden. That's what we're going to talk about today and we're also going to talk about how your garden is a house. That's what I want to associate in, 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 with you guys today. So when it comes to the, um, the Back to Eden garden uh, and why I think you don't really want that, and it's, it's real simple. The bottom line is what we perceive or what most people perceive the Back to Eden garden to actually be all about you don't probably have the patience or the time to do what you perceive it to be. Plain and simple. I discussed a couple things in my previous video when we talked about the documentary. Because when we talk about Back to Eden gardening, I think it's fair to say that we need or have to associate it that name or that terminology with the Back to Eden documentary with Paul Gauchy that came out in 2011. So the two primary things that I want to bring back to people's attention, and there's a lot of things here, but I'm going to concentrate on two things that I want you to keep in mind as we go through this, this today's video here. Number one is that it's all about the covering. And the other big thing that I wanted to bring up and, and, and get in people's minds out there is that Paul had wood chips covered in his orchard for 16, 17 years until he decided to put the wood chip application in his garden. And during the course of all that time of 17 years, Paul states, I want to bring this back to your remembrance, 17 years Paul had done modern day gardening with a tiller, maybe a plow, and all the things associated with it. But because Paul is organic, he was bringing in his chicken, manure, fertilized compost down, and the beddings thereof. We can assume that is probably true for 17 years. So keep that back in, in, in the back of your head. That's why I say perceived back to Eden, what people perceive it to be. So, what I would like to do, and I think I'm going to attempt this from now on, is try to cause a little bit of separation. Back to Eden Garden and No-Till Garden. Because of that perception, that what is commonly perceived as a Back to Eden Garden, I want to set that aside and just concentrate on a new category of just No-Till Gardening. Because that, 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 that will bring a lot of other things into light. Because what I didn't state in my last video, and I apologize, and I wish I had, it's not just about Paul's experience in his gardening, okay? There's so many other people in the permaculture uh, um, family, if you will, people like Jeff Lawton or uh, Joe Salatine, and in the natural uh, farming community as well, there's people out there. There's all this wealth of information and knowledge. And it's, it's like having this smorgasbord of ingredients. And we got a recipe here. We may not be able to use all the ingredients for whatever reasons, but we can find alternatives, sometimes even better. So as we move along in this, what I'd like to do is I'd like to try to make an association between your garden and a house. Your garden build and a house build. Your garden is a house. And in doing so, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to break it down into three major uh, categories, if you will, on, on the house build. And some of you master carpenters and builders out there, bear with me on this. Uh, show me a give me a little break and show me a little slack here because I'm just trying to make a, a, a clear picture here for, for some folks out there when it comes to building a vegetable garden from scratch or transitioning to uh, a vegetable garden uh, that is no-till. So just cut me a little slack here. I could probably do it in four uh, categories but uh, or, or stages, but I'm going to just do the three here. So those stages or categories that I'm going to break it down in is the roof, the house, and the foundation. 
into those three stages in the house build. And I want to show you how that will relate and is just like your garden. So let's talk about the roof. The roof represents the covering in the garden. The foundation of the house build represents the foundation, the soil in the garden as well. And the house represents, when we go to building a house, we have this idea of things that we want, we need, or we desire. Okay, and the house is in representation or in correlation with the garden in the same manner of what we want, need, or desire. And that is in the form of the plants and the fruits thereof. So bear with me on this. Now, in any house build, what is the first thing that we have to take in consideration? Obviously, the location. And in that location that we want to con uh, construct our house build, we have to give a high amount of attention okay to the foundation in that location that we want to build this house we assess it we analyze it we do whatever with, with, with that ground and, and and make a determination if whether or not it's going to be supportive of our house build and so what we'll find out here is that we may find things in that area that will not be supportive or conducive to a good foundation for the house build and in and, and by finding these things out we remove things that aren't going to be uh, conducive or supportive and also if something is not there like good bedrock and clay we might bring things in to to substitute that bedrock or whatnot so the bottom line is we remove things that aren't supportive of what we need for that house build in the foundation and we bring things in same thing in the garden this is the most important step. This is the first step that must be taken into consideration in the garden and in the house bill. So in the garden, if there are things or conditions that are not conducive to a good foundation for a garden, which is going to be an opposite of the house build, mind you, but the same principles apply then we remove or we address those conditions. If there's something there that is not present, that we need there, then we bring it in. Same concept, same principle. This must be taken into consideration first. Because folks, let's face it, if we're building a house, uh, you can build it as big as you want, you can build it as small, as nice, you can use the finest materials the world has to offer. And it can end up being for naught if it's built on a poor foundation that does not support that house in the way it was intended to do so for a long time, for a long term. So what we find out is the same thing in the garden, in our soil, because that is the growing medium. There's no better growing medium than soil with clay, sand, and silt and all the things that come along with that. All right. So, you can do whatever you want. And if you don't have a good foundation, you're going to have issues that's going to arise and going to be a headache and a heartache for days and years to come in the house build and in the garden. So now that brings me to stage number two, or step number two. Component number two is the roof. It is the roof, the roof or the covering. Uh, some people are going to be out there. Some of you master carpenters, hold on just a little bit, all right? Because I know other people are thinking, wait a minute, you can't put a roof on, you know, without starting the house. You know, they kind of go along together. Bear with me on this, all right? If we have a good foundation, what you see in a house build is you start seeing this skeletal framework starting to develop, right? And it does so as quickly as possible. In the ground, in the soil, if you have a good foundation, which you have no part of for the, for, for the most part, you have no input into it, what happens is you start seeing this skeletal framework starting to develop in, in, in your foundation. So it's taking place there already. Once you got a good foundation going, then the skeletal framework starts coming into place. Now, some of these carpenters here, you master carpenters, can hopefully support me on this but I think the principle 
uh, consideration that is taking place when that framework starts happening and happening quickly. The objective for stage number two, the number one objective and goal is to hurry up as quickly and as, and as uh, efficiently as possible is to get that roof on, to get that covering on, to get it closed in or weathered in, right? Why is that? Because the roof and that covering, that weathering in, protects that framework and that foundation. Am I right? And it's the same thing in our ground for our gardens. Once we got a good foundation, that framework and, and, and skeletal framework and whatnot is going to start coming into play. And we want to protect that. So that's why the roof and the covering is stage number two. This is important because you, you're going to start seeing, and I hope light bulbs start going off on you. And some of you folks out there had that, ah, that aha moment, you know, where it just all makes sense. Because what you're seeing out there when it comes to a lot of people having these failures in their garden builds, going to a no-till garden or what they're trying to do as a back to Eden garden, is they are not giving the consideration to the foundation in the first place. The foundation must be taken care of and all the issues that may or may not be present there dealt with. What they're doing is they're bringing in in the form of six inches, eight inches, 12 inches of wood chips or whatever covering, because it can be hay, it can be leaves, it can be pine needles or whatnot. And they're bringing in wood chips. Yeah, maybe a little bit of manure. Maybe you're throwing down some uh, uh, cardboard and newspaper. It doesn't matter. It's still the soil, the groundwork underneath that is the foundation. And if you go about it like that, that's why I say we want to separate no-till and back to Eden. If you go about it that approach, you need to have the time and the patience to do what Paul did. And I said in our last video, we don't have to do that. And Paul, in a kind of way, really didn't do the same thing. Why? Because he tilled his garden for 17 years and bringing inputs into it as well. Remember that why that's key. So what happens then they're starting to, they're expecting this house to develop on this poor foundation. And they're waiting and then they have all these failures because they didn't address the things that need to be addressed first. And they bring this roof in. And remember the other thing I want to point out, uh, bring to your remembrance, is that Paul says it's all about the covering, which is true. So let me ask you this. When we put a roof on our house, do we want that to, de to deteriorate or decay quickly? No, we do not. <laughs> we really do not. It's the covering. It protects, you know, everything below. The, the, all that framework and that foundation, that's what that roof and that covering is doing. It's protecting that skeletal framework. And we don't want that to break down. We want it to work more like nature. It's a slow process, and in the end, it's going to feed back into the soil. But if it broke down year after year, through the season that means we got to bring wood chips in every single year and you'll see that Paul does not have to do that over time every two to three years you just replenish it and you don't bring in six eight ten inches think of it like a roof when a roofer comes in he's not putting in you know two three four five layers of shingles if you start doing that on your own house you're going to start having some negative effects and it's, it can be the same thing in the garden as well because it becomes difficult to work around that when we're planting and harvesting and so forth. All you need is that one layer of shingles on the house. It can support two, but all you need is that one. And it's the same thing with the garden. So if you're going to bring in the, the covering, the roof, do so after the foundation work is all completed and done, and then only do for two to three inches. That's all you need and just wait its time. That's important. That's I hope you can see why so many people are failing, you know, as we discuss this. That brings us to the house. Because ultimately the house, the living quarters, it's the living quarters of the house that make up the home. And that's what we need, want, and desire. Because now that we have a good foundation and we have good protection, we have a covering on it and on that skeletal work. Technically, it can start supplying or providing some of the basic elements of our needs. But so can it happen so in your garden, but not to our satisfaction in the house or in our garden.
right? Because we want our plants and vegetables to develop and become better and better over time, building up a good immune system, which is also going to help defend against some of these nuisance things that we have in our gardens. Same thing in the house. Now that you got a good foundation to build on and you got it protected with the roof or the covering, now you can take your time a little bit in developing and, 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 and inside the home. You know, that's when we start doing the wiring, you know, the mycelium network. That's where the plumbing starts coming in. Water coming in, good drainage going out, right? And then we start seeing walls develop, drywall, paint, trim, flooring, carpet, tile, sinks, light fixtures, and now it starts really becoming what you originally truly wanted or needed or desired for your home. That starts developing over time and it's your pace. But the same thing takes place in the garden in a sort of way. Things start becoming better and better month after month, season after season. And we still have required maintenance in a home and in a garden. You know, if you got a home that needs painted every four or five years, we do that. You got a roof that needs to be replaced every 15, 20 years, that's what we do. The timelines are going to be a little bit different from the garden to the house, but I hope you can kind of see where I'm going with this. If we take this approach, all right, you can have success no matter where you're at, as long as you can obtain the resources or get the conditions conducive to a good foundation for your garden this can be done anywhere so we're going to carry on with this all right and we're going to talk about some of these issues and we're going to talk about this foundational work and everything in in my upcoming videos but i just want to do this systematically and get some people to kind of look at this from a different angle and then when you see these videos out there and people saying it won't work it will. They're just not taking the time and they want to just bail out because they don't want to address some issues when it comes to the foundation. But yet year after year, season after season, people go buy these chemicals and they to deal with aphids, to deal with white flies, to deal with hornworms or squash bugs. And those aren't just, you know, set for geograph or uh, just uh, attributed to one geographical location. Everybody has, but they'll take the time. But they don't want to change, they don't want to relearn how to do something that can end up being more beneficial and lab less labor intensive for them in the long run. We just got to look at nature. Folks, I hope you share this with somebody. Use your social media. Get people keyed up on, keyed up on this stuff. Share it with your family members, your neighbors and whatnot, however you want to do it. If you want to bring them along on this videos, on these videos or this channel, by all means do so. But just pass the information on. Come back. I hope you have a nice day. May all your branches become full of fruit, and I hope I'll see you next time. Huh? Right on.